What's up, sons? It's Blind Riding with Sama Tech once again. Today, we're going to be talking about virtual private networks and how they're utilized within cryptocurrency in general, including both mining as well as trading. A huge disclaimer at the beginning, I do not condone any of these actions and it is purely for educational purposes. There we go. If you would like to put your whole entire home network behind a VPN, be sure to check out the affiliate link for flash routers down in the description. Flash routers will pre-flash a router for you with DDWRT, which is a firmware that supports, of course, VPNs, and it comes with a nice user interface, making it easy for you to connect to your favorite VPN service, whether that be private internet access or NordVPN. Once again, that is primarily for security and not for the uses that we're going to be talking about in this video. Well, sort of. Let's get into it. So virtual private networks, and for short, throughout the rest of this video, we're going to call them VPNs, are a service that allows you to basically appear to be coming from a different location than your actual physical location when accessing different services and features on the internet. While this works for the most part from a security standpoint, that is not the end all be all for security. And if you're worried about security in cryptocurrency, then you need to be looking into things like hardware, multi-factor authentication, a good antivirus software like maybe say Kaspersky, and as well as a good password manager that is preferably not built into your browser. At least that's what I would prefer. While I have recommended LastPass as well as Dashlane and services like that, it has become very apparent that in the case of the recent events with LastPass, that maybe installing it into your browser isn't the best idea. And we can go over that in a different video. If you're interested, let me know in the comment section below. That out of the way, we will cover security in a completely different video. As it pertains to VPNs, the security is just to obfuscate, and I have a tough time pronouncing that word, so maybe we will spell it out for you guys on the screen. Now, what does that mean? That means essentially that you are kind of masking your real location with a VPN moved location, right? So let's say you connect to a VPN in Europe, but you live in the US, or you connect to a VPN in Mexico, but you live in the UK, so on and so forth. And this can be viable, especially for miners from the aspect of mining to a cryptocurrency pool. Personally, I do use a VPN service when connecting to a cryptocurrency pool because I don't want necessarily the pool to have my physical location, or at least for it to be a little bit harder for them to track it down. The reason for this obviously is I don't trust anybody and I don't trust pool owners. No matter how large the pool is, you don't know how many people are working on it, how many people live close to you or your location, and how many people would be in a position where they may want to be a bad actor or perform something against you. And so just being able to make sure that it's a little bit more difficult from a miner's perspective, I do it. The downside of using a VPN for mining is like we talked about in the stale shares video that you will increase your stale shares to a certain extent. And this is due to basically latency between your miners and the VPN location. And then from the VPN location, of course, to the mining pool. As long as you're under 200 milliseconds, you should be fine. However, of course, the faster or the lower the latency to the mining pool, the faster you'll submit shares and the faster you submit shares before other people, the more shares you have Therefore, the more crypto you earn. Very simple base terms. The next part here is the part that we're gonna talk about for educational purposes only, and that is what cryptocurrency traders do uh, and with VPNs in particular. So when you're trading cryptocurrency, you can find it very difficult to trade certain currencies in certain geographical locations. And on top of that, some geographical locations require super stringent rules on exchanges to operate within that location, including tracking user data. Now, a lot of the times this user data is used so that they can track taxes and so on for that geographical location. VPNs aren't necessarily used to avoid taxes. However, that could be a purpose that they are used for. And I would condemn that on this channel pretty vocally 
even if you do use it to access a different exchange in a, from a different geographical location, you should still report your capital gains on those trades to your, of course, participating government, whatever you are in. That being said, that could be a side use of it. And then following that up, of course, like I said, the big thing is you just don't have access to some of the exchanges and tools for some of the cryptocurrencies that you wish to participate in. A great example of this would be if you were even just trying to mine. It's not illegal to mine any given cryptocurrency like Monero. However, if you were in a U.S based geographical location and you wanted to swap some Monero, it becomes very difficult because there's not a ton of options. That's one example. Another one could be Conflux and there's a few of them. Uh, mainly privacy coins are typically blocked on a lot in a lot of geographical locations because once again, they're difficult to track for taxes and obviously people will just say that if they're trying to get money from you, they don't want to trust you. So they want to be able to see exactly what is going on with your trading behavior there. So from a cryptocurrency traders perspective, they use VPNs to unlock the potential to trade different cryptocurrencies that are not available in their geographical location. Another thing about this is that depending on your geographical location, we talked about that user sign up. Guess what? A lot of cryptocurrency users don't like signing up for things and for good reason. There is no need for a trust. And if you are based on that principle of crypto, which is antitrust, anti-banks, essentially, at a very basic term, or anti-federal reserve, so on and so forth, then you don't want to be giving out personal information. It, it goes back to the Cypherpunk Manifesto, which is what I do with the interactions of another person on a peer-to-peer -peer basis is none of the government's business or anybody else's business. And cryptocurrency at its base is enabling the financial portion of that manifesto. Like I said, once again, for educational purposes only, okay? So some people don't want to register for websites at all, including mining pools uh, and uh, exchanges like finance.us or coinbase or crypto.com or any of these services right they they don't want to sign up for them because they don't believe that is anybody else's business and they want to maintain their anonymity so they use virtual private networks to connect to exchanges that don't require these sorts of things registration essentially now the downside to this is that sure that's all great and fine now you are basically trading crypto in and out and you aren't being tracked and you haven't submitted any user information binance.com technically doesn't make you submit any user information hence why they created binance.us you have a few others out there that, that just never require you to uh, including prime xbt and the only thing Prime XBT will do just to make sure that they're all within the legal realm is notify you if you connect from a US IP and request that you basically are connecting through a VPN from the US. And that's kind of how they get around that with asking those questions. Once again, these are all gray areas for educational purposes. And I'm just trying to explain to you guys how it works. So there you go. I can't think of anything else. That's pretty much it. That's why VPNs are used. Once again, for miners to obfuscate their IP and basically protect their geolocation of their mining rigs and for traders to access services and other cryptocurrencies that may not be allowed in their geographical location. I hope this video was educational and helpful. If you found it helpful, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. Hit the notification bell and I will see you next Tuesday. Also, all capital gains, even if you use a VPN, make sure you just track them and claim them. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here. Or, of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.